Good morning, Jericho. I wanted to take a minute just to share some thoughts from the McCarthy family to all of you. Uh, we wanted to let you know that we are really praying for the situation here in North America and all over the world with coronavirus. Um, and that just as you guys have been praying for us, so we also are praying for you. And, um, and we are just very aware that there is a lot of heaviness and a lot of anxiety happening right now and fear. And uh, we are standing with our Jericho family and praying for you guys as you face a lot of uncertainty. And since I can't be there with you in person this morning, I just wanted to take some time to share with you a presentation that I would have loved to have given to you face to face, but I'm really uh, thrilled to be able to share a little update with you uh, via the internet this morning. So here it goes. First of all, despite our distance, I wanted to thank you for letting me come and speak with you through this video. It is such a privilege to share a little bit of what God is doing in Papua New Guinea with you all. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Anita McCarthy, and my husband John and I, and our four kids, Ben, Jacob, Elliot, and Lucy, are currently living in the eastern highlands of Papua New Guinea, serving as teachers as members of Wycliffe Canada. Papua New Guinea is the bottom half of the island shared with Indonesia, and it is north of Australia, and it takes about 24 hours total with no delays to fly from Canada to PNG. The trip includes a long leg from here to Australia, a shorter leg to Port Moresby, the capital of PNG, and then an hour and a half on a small plane up to the highlands. It's definitely not an easy place to get to. We even have to step on a scale and get weighed before every flight on the small planes. Our kids think it's hilarious and are quite excited to see how much they weigh as a group of four. The climate here varies from the coast to inland areas to the highlands where we live and can range from a humidity of 100% on the coast to a mere 85% humidity in the highlands. We experience a lot of sun and nearly daily rain, especially in the rainy season, but the only other season is called dry season and should really just be called the less rainy season. In this video, you can see the rain starting about two houses down from us and moving like a sheet toward us. At the very least, it provides us an opportunity to run before we get soaked. Despite the rain, I am never cold and the kids are able to play outside nearly 365 days a year, which is amazing for our high energy kids and kind of reminds us of our childhood. The next video shows our kids playing outside with some drones sent to us by family in a care package. They love any opportunity to go outside and run around, rain or not. We first went to PNG in 2016 when our kids were 1, 3, 5, and 7, thinking that we would only stay for two years and then come back and resume our life in Canada. We had jobs on leave from our school districts, renters for our basement and townhouse, and a whole life waiting for us back in Canada. But about a year into our first term, we realized the deep need that existed in Ukarampa for teachers and individuals who wanted to mentor, love, serve, and disciple the youth of Ukarampa. It was hard to see that need, to see how the filling of that need directly benefited the work of Bible translation in Papua New Guinea, a country with over 700 different language groups and many unreached people groups, and to just simply return to our lives in Canada. The decision to return to PNG long term after our first one-year furlough back in Canada was a hard one, but we were confident that this was what the Lord wanted for us and for our family. With God's call clear, we spent some time further building our monthly partnership team this past year and returned to the mission field in July for a three-year term, with the intention of continuing to return as long as the Lord calls us back. We returned in mid-July, ready to begin teaching. The school year in PNG follows more of a year-round schooling model, with a five-week break in December and one in June, allowing for people from both hemispheres to return home if need be, and with kids who are now ages 4, 6, 8, and 10. Our journey started off well, as well as a 15-hour flight with four young kids can go, and we were blessed to have some time with dear friends in Brisbane before heading to PNG. We also had the wonderful opportunity to connect with three of the UIS grads of 2018 while in Brisbane, which was both an incredible blessing and a great reminder of the importance of building relationships with these kids. The missionary kids that we teach and interact with in Ukarampa are from all over the world, 
They are in Papua New Guinea because of the work and ministry of their parents, but we know that there is a battle going on for each and every one of their hearts. It is a privilege to have the opportunity to teach these kids, pray for these kids, listen to these kids, and point them in any way we can to the truth of God's word, the truth of his character, and the truth of his faithfulness, with the hopes that they will grow in their personal walks with God and follow him for the rest of their lives. The opportunity for relationship with these students starts in Ukarampa, but doesn't end when they graduate. We continue to be connected with many of the grads of 2018 via social media and a wonderful app called Marco Polo that lets us send them video messages for them to open up and watch when they have a chance and when we have internet. It provides opportunities to still listen to them, support them, love them, and let them know that we're praying for them, and it is a huge gift. The time we had with these former grads in Brisbane was a great reminder of the why behind our return to PNG when the reality of leaving Canada behind long term and the life we once thought we would have there felt heavy. Our journey back to PNG continued after our time in Brisbane and was met with a lot of spiritual attack. We experienced immense opposition at the airport with respect to our luggage and ended up with an extra luggage charge in the thousands despite having been promised two bags per person the entire way to PNG. We arrived in PNG and one week later I traveled to a village by helicopter to photograph a dedication only to have some of my camera equipment stolen from our village bush house. A week or so later, my laptop had an unexpected run-in with some sugary soda, and a few weeks later, our 500 US dollar water pump was stolen from the side of our house in the middle of the night. Now that we have traveled to PNG twice, and I have spoken with a lot of other missionaries here, it is so evident that the enemy wants to attack in these times of transition. He wants to get us to quit before we even have the chance to see God come through. He wants us to question why we're following Christ. He wants us to feel useless and ill-equipped, discouraged and disheartened, but we are learning to recognize these attacks and to pray in God's powerful name for the ability to continue walking in His ways with confidence in His faithfulness, His provision, and His plan. And so often the prayers of His people and the provision He provides through His people is just another incredible reminder of His protection and His never-ending care for our hearts. The financial encouragements, prayer, and practical supports we have received from Jericho Ridge already this term have been so incredibly timely and so incredibly appreciated, and we are thankful. Beyond our financial struggles, there was fighting in nearby villages near Ukarampa and huge disagreements which have still not been resolved between two local people groups. Fighting that was occasionally spilling over onto our center and making us feel uneasy and unsafe at times. These pictures are from our primary campus sports day, during which at one point we were told that some fighting had broken out on center and we may have to gather up all of the kids and wait until the fighting subsided. Thankfully, our wonderful security team was able to contain the situation and our day was able to go on as planned. The heaviness of safety concerns was also met almost immediately with the heaviness at the secondary campus of Ukarampa International School. John and I have the opportunity this year to teach the bulk of the science courses, with the other two science teachers being on furlough, and only one other science teacher here at UIS. John is department head and teaching multiple chemistry classes and biology, and I am teaching Science 8 in yearbook. We were also asked this year to be the Student Representative Council Advisors. SRC is similar to Student Council, and our role is to advise them and help them in accomplishing their tasks, the largest of which is a huge fundraising carnival that happens in October every year. John and I are also community group leaders and love to host fun events for the kids in a place where options for fun outings are limited. I've also been able to use my love of photography here to capture photos that can be used for a school yearbook, used by other missionaries in their communications with their partners at home, and used by the school in their ongoing task of recruiting. In all of our interactions with the students at UIS this school year, it was clear to us that there was a very heavy spiritual battle happening for the hearts of every student at this school, and over the months that followed, this became more and more clear as a total of six students and our youth directors have left unexpectedly since July. That's six students and six family units that have had to leave for one unexpected reason or another, and as a result, 12 parents that have also had to leave their jobs, and one youth department that is currently being managed by three amazing teachers who already have full-time jobs here in Ukarampa. We are so thankful that you have all been praying for the youth of Ukarampa, and we would ask that you continue to do so. Part of what we saw in the youth here during our first term that confirmed in our hearts the deep need that existed for people to love and serve youth is the fact that these kids are in a constant state of transition. They face all of the same challenges faced by teenagers around the globe and some additional challenges unique to their status as missionary kids. They struggle with identity, purpose, self-confidence, fear, anxiety, and worry, and just because their parents are on the mission field does not mean that they have a personal relationship with Jesus. 
They struggle with mental health issues, just like kids do all over the world, and they are under attack, sometimes simply because they are on the mission field with their parents. God is sovereign, and we know that he sees the whole picture, but if a family has to go home unexpectedly because they need to find help for their child, then other roles here in Ukarumpa that directly or indirectly support Bible translation are left vacant and stresses on other families are increased. These youth need support, they need consistency, they need people who will point them to the consistency of Christ in their worlds that are full of markedly more change than the average teenager. They are given amazing opportunities to lean on God, but in order to do that, they need to have a personal relationship with Him and to see that modeled in the adults who are there to teach, serve, and love them. We have loved and continue to love having the opportunity to be some of those adults. These pictures show just two of the students, both in the senior class, who have had to leave this year for unexpected reasons. Would you continue to pray for the youth of Ukarumpa? Even without the unexpected departures, this place is a place of constant coming and going. The senior class, once a class of 23 when I taught them in grade 9, will graduate as a class of 12, with two of their classmates having left unexpectedly this year. My group of grade 8 girls that I lead in weekly Bible studies was once a group of 8 and is now a group of 3. Our school that was once a school of over 200 students at the secondary campus is now just under 100 students, and in a center full of about 400 people, over 11 families have had to leave for unexpected reasons in the past year. Families everywhere experience spiritual attack, and families in ministry and on the mission field are no different. The attack seems so clearly targeted at children and youth right now in Ukarumpa, and we would covet your prayers for all of us as we navigate these transitions in a way that honors God and brings Him glory in the midst of it all. We also wanted to thank you for praying for our kids. If there was ever a question of whether or not the children of Ukarumpa need people to love and support them, that question is answered by looking at the experience of our own children. When we first arrived in 2016, our oldest son Ben and our third son Elliot had the most significant challenges in their transitions. Ben struggled immensely to fit in at school, and Elliot struggled dramatically with all of the changes he was experiencing in a short period of time. This term has been no different, and while on furlough, our second son Jacob began to struggle significantly with ear pain, chronic headaches, and anxiety, the struggles for our oldest son Ben have continued here in Ukarumpa. Ben is now in middle school and has struggled to fit in and feel confident in who God has made him to be. He has experienced bullying at school and has felt lonely and misunderstood at times. In the midst of these difficulties, we have had incredible opportunities to talk with him, pray with him, and point him back to his worth in Christ in the hopes that he would believe primarily in who God says he is and his inherent worth as a child of God. Even though the struggles have been hard, God has also placed people around him, teachers and community group leaders and community members, as well as friends and family from back home who has spoken truth into his life in significant ways at just the right time. As we watch these people encourage and uplift our son, we have been reminded once again of why we are here. We are here to do the same thing for other people's children. We are here to help share the load that parents carry as they try to support and encourage and disciple their kids while being far away from other supports. And we are here to do all of these things for the larger purpose of supporting Bible translation. In 2020, there are four complete New Testament dedications planned and numerous other mini-dedications for portions of Scripture and audio Bibles. We have also had the blessing of connecting with the language group that received a New Testament back in the early 2000s after years of hard work and dedication from John's Auntie Joy and her translation partner. The Kanite people are now working on recording larger portions of the Scripture in their language so that more Kanite people can hear God's Word and understand it clearly. Without people here to teach the children of translators, translators have to go home. And as we have seen this school year, the kids here in Ukarumpa need more than just teachers. They need people to come alongside them, lift them up in prayer, listen to their doubts and fears, and point them to the Word and the love of a Father who is relentlessly pursuing their hearts. We are passionate about being some of those people. We are so incredibly thankful that our Jericho Ridge family plays a huge role in enabling us to continue to serve in Papua New Guinea, and we are consistently aware of the wonderful prayer warriors we have at Jericho standing with us and our family as, as we face individual spiritual attack on the mission field. Thank you so much. I want to thank you on behalf of my family and on behalf of the youth of Ukarumpa and the many translators and support workers in Ukarumpa. Thank you for continuing to pray. Our partnership with you plays a direct role in getting God's word into the hearts of Papua New Guineans and missionary kids alike. If you are hearing about this ministry for the first time, or maybe you've heard us share before, and you are passionate about partnering with us as we teach, serve, love, and disciple youth in support of Bible translation, we would absolutely love to chat with you via email. You can also visit our website and easily navigate to a screen that will let you partner with us financially. Thank you so much for your love, support, prayers, and for your time this morning. Thank you.